series of starts. Here I'm drawing in with a pastel pencil. It's a Carbothello, uh, so I can erase if I make a mistake. And um, very simple drawings. I'm laying out the perspective. I'm getting big notes like trees and lights and shadows. So my drawing is not a detailed drawing, but it's the basic structure of the painting. So we got light and shadow, light and shadow. This is in light, but it's a dark light compared to this light. Look how light that is compared. This is, uh, you know, one big tree. In the first step that I posted on my YouTube channel for this um, uh, Ellis Creek tree painting, uh, now I'm going to get big notes for the tree shape. Um, and as you can see, I didn't start with the local color of green. It was a dark tree, so I started with a magenta with the intention that I will add the local color of green, the same value to this first initial lay-in. So I'm at this point kind of designing, maybe changing some of the shapes. And this is the structure, the underlying structure to a painting. So I'm just mixing these paints. Um, now I'm going to probably put in the trunk of the tree, which I think when we get to that, I made that a little bit less red. I added some, uh, some orange to that. So here I'm putting in the, um, the trunk of the tree. I'm mixing the colors. Yeah. So, um, this is the important step to get that first lay-in as strong as possible. So I'm not dealing with only the details, I'm dealing with uh, bigger shapes. In the Ellis Creek tree painting, so I'm <clears throat> covering the canvas with my first lay-in. The background tree was warmer and darker. The tree on the right in front of that is a little bit uh, cooler so I actually used a cool green and then I'm going to put a light plane add some yellow to that light plane the next bush on the right is warmer so I've added some cad yellow to the light plane and maybe a little bit of orange to the shadow note so this is this is how I start a painting I exaggerate the light dark patterns. I divide the trees into a light and a shadow note. Now I'm putting in some mustard in the in the background. And then there's some cooler green around it. So this is step three. A bush on the left and it's a little, it's got an orange kind of cast to it. So I'm putting a light plane that's orange and then the shadow note a little bit cooler. So I'm going to try to cover this first lay in as soon as possible. Um, pro probably 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. So now I'm putting some greens in the background and when I'm putting those in, I'm looking at the, maybe the green tree in the middle on the right and it it's a very pure saturated green compared to the more neutral green that i'm putting in the background so that allows that to kind of fall back not to come forward so as i'm painting as i'm going from one color note to an adjacent color note i'm keeping in mind all the colors that i've already used and i'm trying not to repeat a color which is very difficult sometimes especially when you're painting greens so i'm thinking background probably is going to be more neutral compared to some of the foreground colors um, that orange on the left really stood out so i didn't see another orange in this um in this uh scene so i'm continuing with my lay-in this is step five 
So those bushes or those trees in the background are cooler, cooler purple compared to the main tree, which had more red, more of a magenta, so it comes forward. So I'm really just putting in big shapes, not getting into details yet. This is the underlying structure of the painting, which is really important. So I'm not, the, I can always get into some fine detail as I finish, as I go back and refine my lay-in. But right now I'm setting up the um, structure, the underlying structure. Big shapes, which I keep emphasizing my students. To just see big shapes, don't get into the little details yet. There's the scene, early morning, sunny. Probably took me a half hour to cover the canvas. That's a cooler pink, putting it in perspective. Then I have a little more darker color in the foreground, a little, little warmer as it comes forward. I'm trying to cover quickly and I'm relating every color. Once, when I put a color down, I relate it to every other color in the painting. So here on the side of this road, there's a little bit of a shadow note. I'm gonna come in <clears throat> very soon and put some cooler shadow over here. And when I put that in, I'm kind of redesigning those shapes. Because I am, in fact, making a painting here. So if I can improve on nature, I do. If I can't, I just copy. Adding more color, uh, this uh, foreground green here, I've added a little bit of warmth to that compared to the background greens. So that's a light, dark pattern, light in shadow. I'm gonna do that on the other side and try to make that that patch a little bit interesting because it takes up so much of the foreground space. <clears throat> and I've brought in a warm color. This is an early sunny, early morning sunny study, sunlit study. It's a tree in the background. Look at this. Uh, Intense color here. That's a cad, cad orange, I think, with a little bit of yellow. So that really brings that whole patch forward. And I'm thinking about that when I'm painting. I'm painting aerial perspective. So I'm painting the air from the foreground and relating it. There's these sheets of, I say, um, air between the foreground and the background. So things in the foreground are going to be more intense you know, warmer, more saturated, and that'll bring them forward. <clears throat> 